welcome to the Scoring Basics for the 2014-2015 USA Volleyball season. This module will cover the use of the non-deciding set score sheet. When you sit down at the table to keep score, you will find this paperwork. A two-set non-deciding set score sheet. A deciding set score sheet, which is often on the back of the non-deciding set score sheets. Two lineup sheets. And a Libro control sheet. In this module, you will learn the basics for keeping score for a non-deciding set. Non-deciding means that the teams will remain on the same side of the court for the entire set. Here, you'll see the score sheet that is used with the various parts of the score sheet labeled. This module will cover the sections you'll be using the most while keeping score. Let's start with the heading information. When you first arrive at the score table, check to see if the heading section of the score sheet is already filled out. Many tournaments pre-print this. If not, here is the information that really needs to be completed before the match starts. If you have a pen, it's best to use ink to record the heading information. Date of the match, court number, scheduled match time, and team names. Everything you write on the score sheet is done in capital letters. The referee can assist you in filling out the rest of the information before the start of the match. The next section you will fill in will be the official section. If possible, complete this section in ink as well. Ask the referees their names and record that information in the official section of the sheet, remembering to print their names last name first, followed by their first names. You can see here that Alice Beck is the first referee and Bill Table is the second referee. You then print your name in the appropriate box beneath the referees and fill in your team name and region. The next area you will complete is the time and team information row, also in ink if possible. After the coin toss, the referee will inform you which team will be serving and which side of the court each team will be on for the first set. From your viewpoint at the score table, Lightning will be serving from the left and Thunder will be receiving on your right. Place the team names in the appropriate section. Next to the team names, you can see the letters A on the left and B on the right. The team that starts the match on your left for set one, Lightning, will be team A throughout the entire match. Likewise, the team on the right, Thunder, will be team B for the entire match. In that same row, next to the A and B, you will see the letters S and R in circles, one above the other. Lightning is serving first, so place an X over the circle S on the left side of the sheet to show they will be serving first in this set. This means that Thunder is receiving, so place an X over the R in the circle on the right side. You need to place one more X on the sheet before you are ready to move on. This X will be placed in the service rounds box for the receiving team. Because Thunder is receiving first, the player in position one will not be their first server. The team will rotate before they serve. So place an X in the first service round box under position one for Thunder. Remember that at the start of the set, always write three X's on the sheet before you even enter the lineups. An X to mark the serving team, an X to mark the receiving team, and an X in the first service round box under position one player on the receiving team. Next, you will record the lineups. When you receive the lineup sheets from the second referee, but before you enter them, make sure there are no duplicate numbers anywhere on the sheet. There is a C next to the number of one of the regular players indicating the game captain. There are numbers or an X in all Libro boxes and that the coach has signed the lineup sheet. If you find duplicate numbers or any other item is missing, Ask the second referee to verify the information before entering it on the score sheet. If you receive a lineup sheet that has one or both of the Libro boxes blank, have the second referee ask the coach or captain if the team will be using Libros. If they will not be using any more Libros than what is already marked on the sheet, place an X in one or both boxes to designate that there will be one or no Libro. Now that you've checked the lineups over, Enter them into the service order section of the score sheet. The player number in the Roman numeral box 1 on the lineup sheet is entered into the Roman numeral column 1 in the service order area for that team. Then box 2, box 3, and so on. It does not matter if a team is serving or receiving.
the lineups are always entered in the same fashion. Enter either lineup first, but be sure to enter the information on the correct side of the score sheet. Lightning is on the left, so enter their lineup as seen here. Then record 16 and 20 in the Libra boxes on the Lightning side of the score sheet. Then enter Thunder's lineup in the same manner, not forgetting to enter the Libros, 11 and X, in the Libro boxes on Thunder's side of the score sheet. After entering both lineups, give the lineup sheets to the assistant scorer who will enter the information onto the Libro control sheet. During the match, be sure to work closely with the assistant scorer. After you have completed the information for the first set of the match, you should enter the information you know for the second set. The team names and service status, remembering that the teams will switch sides for the second set, and that the team that served first in the first set will receive in the second set. The three X's discussed earlier. The Libro information for both teams. If the team has designated two Libros in the first set, Enter both Libros for that team for the second set. If the team has designated zero or one Libro in the first set, leave the first Libro box for that team blank, but enter an X in the second Libro box. Here is what your score sheet will look like before the first serve of this set. Before the set begins, it's a good idea that a referee checks the score sheet to see that the lineups have been entered correctly. The second referee will then take the lineup sheets and check the rotations on the court. At the same time, you use the score sheet to check the team lineups for both teams, working with the second referee to ensure that all players are in the correct court position to start the set. If you see a player on the court you think might be in the wrong position, bring it to the attention of the second referee right away. Work closely with the second referee during the entire match. If you have any issues at all, don't hesitate to let the second referee know that you need some assistance. When the teams are on the court and you are ready to start play, give the referees the ready signal. Once play begins, you record most information in this part of the score sheet. Here you may use pencil. Looking at the score sheet, you know that number 9 for Lightning is the first server, since the team on your left is marked as serving first in this set. Make sure that number 9 contacts the ball for service, and then in the first service round box, place a small check mark called a tick on the 1. At this time, you should write the start time in the appropriate box, where it says start. When Lightning wins the rally, all you do is slash the 1 in the points column for Lightning. Lightning serves again, so make sure that number 9 is still serving. She does, and Lightning wins the next rally as well. Slash 2 in the points column for Lightning. Lightning number 9 serves again, and this time, Lightning loses the rally. Because Thunder will serve next, number 9 is done serving for this term of service. You see in Lightning's points column that the last number slashed is 2. In the service round box where you placed a tick when number 9 first serve, write 2 as the exit score for that service round. And since a point is scored on every service, slash the 1 in the points column for Thunder. Let's record a few more points. For Thunder, number 8 now serves. So check the number 1 in the first service rounds box under player number 8. If any player other than the correct server, in this case Thunder number 8, serves, wait until the service occurs and then notify the second referee that there was a wrong server. Here, they do have the correct server, so when Thunder wins the rally, in Thunder's points column, slash the second point, number 8 serves once more, and this time Lightning wins the rally. It is now the end of Thunder number 8's term of service, so place a 2, Thunder's score according to the points column, in the ticked service round box. And don't forget to slash the next point, 3, in Lightning's points column. When a Libro serves, you will record things a little bit differently. Let's take a look at how you will do this. When Lightning rotates, Libro number 16 replaces number 3 to serve. 
A Libro may only enter the game through replacements, and this is not noted on the lineups on the score sheet. But you do need to record the Libro serving. When the Libro contacts the ball, check the service round box under the current position that is serving, which is Roman numeral 2, the rotation in which number 3 is the correct player. Then also draw a triangle around the Roman numeral 2 in the service order. The triangle denotes the only position in which either Libro for Lightning may serve for the remainder of this set. When the Libro serve results in a point for that team, triangle the next point in the points column instead of slashing it. In this case, the Libro serve results in a point for Lightning, so draw a triangle around the number 4 in their points column. The Libro serves again, and Lightning wins another rally. So in Lightning's points column, draw a triangle around point number 5. The next time the Libro serves, Thunder wins the rally, and the Libro's term of service is over. Because Lightning has 5 points in their points column, record the number 5 in the check box under player number 3, and slash the next point, number 3, in Thunder's points column. When the referee whistles to authorize the substitution, there are two areas on the score sheet to record the information. Score at substitution and the substitutions row. Recording a substitution is straightforward. When the referee whistles a substitution request, you will see two players in the substitution zone, one coming from the bench and the other leaving the court. Here, number 24 has entered the substitution zone, ready to enter the court, and number 28 is ready to leave. In the first row of boxes under player 28 in the first box, enter 24, the player substituting into the game. Then put the score of the substituting team into the second box in that row, followed by the score of the opponent to the right of the colon. In this case, the score at the time of substitution is 11 to 8. Then slash the next number in the substitutions row. Since this is the first substitution for this team, slash the 1. When you complete recording the substitution, indicate to the referees that you are ready for play to resume with the ready signal. When a player returns to the court, or when another player substitutes into that same position, simply place the information in the next row of boxes under the player's position. Here you see that number 5 entered the game for number 24 when the score was 11 to 10. And then the starting player, number 28, re-entered the game for number 5 at 11 to 11. These are all legal substitutions. Always remember to slash the next number in the substitutions row for each substitution, and to let the referees know when you have finished recording all information and are ready for play to begin. Each team is allowed 12 substitutions per set, with no limit to the number of times a player may enter the court. Inform the second referee when a team has taken its 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th substitutions. Of course, if the second referee asks for that information sooner, accommodate that request. A player may only play one service position in each set. There is no limit to the number of players who may play in one position of that rotation, but once someone plays in that position, that player may only play in that position. The only exception is if all players on the bench have been in the game and a player on the court becomes unable to play due to injury or illness. Then an exceptional substitution may occur so the team does not forfeit the match. If this occurs, the referees will assist you. Take your time with substitutions and be sure you are accurate no matter how many substitutions occur. When more than one substitution takes place during the same dead ball, Give the ready signal after recording the information for each substitution, and never let the referee start play without you indicating that you have recorded all information and are ready for play to start. Let's now take a look at how and where you record a timeout. You can find the timeout box right between the service rounds area in the middle of the score sheet. Recording a timeout is quite simple. When a team requests a timeout, Write the current score in the first available box on that team's side of the timeout boxes. When doing this, the first score listed is the score of the team requesting the timeout. 
In this example, you can see that the team on your left was granted both of its two allowed timeouts, and the team on your right has one timeout remaining in the set. After recording the scores in the timeout box, visually show the referees how many timeouts each team has taken. During each timeout, check that the visual score is accurate, the number of substitutions matches the total team substitutions, and the score at change entries are correct. The second referee may also check the score sheet or ask if everything looks good. When the timeout is over and the teams have returned to the court, give the referees the ready signal. The set is over when a team reaches 25 points with a minimum lead of 2 points. At the conclusion of the set, there are a few things that you will do to make sure that all information is recorded properly. Let's take a look at what you do in the service rounds box at the end of the set. First, in the correct service round box, enter the score of 25. And then, using pen, circle the final score in the service round box of both teams. In this instance, circle the 25 on the left and the 19 on the right. Also, enter the time the set ended in the time and team information. If the receiving team scores the final point of the set, be sure to write that final point in the correct service round box, giving that team its final point, but without a tick in the service round box. Then complete by circling the final scores as just described. The next thing to do is to close out the points column for each team. To finish the points columns, draw an hourglass around all unused points for both teams. Draw the hourglasses as shown here, with the top lines of the hourglass above the top number and the bottom line below the lowest number. Make sure you draw an hourglass on each column that has an unused number in it. The last thing needed at the end of the set is to complete the results section. As this is the first set of the match, fill in the correct information in the area for set 1 results. Lightning won the first set over Thunder, 25-19. Before moving on to prepare the sheet for the second set, check over the first set and see that you have recorded all points correctly and that you have the correct winning team. At the end of the match, there are a few additional things that need to be completed before you are finished with your duties. The first will be the completion of the results section. At the end of the second set, fill out the information for set 2 results. When the match is completed, make sure you fill out who won the match, followed by the number of sets they won and the number of sets they lost. In this case, Lightning won the match 2-0 over Thunder. Check over the score sheet to make sure everything is properly completed and make sure the signature section is filled out. Once you know that you have completed everything correctly and have the right team winning the match, sign your name in the last box of the signature section. Then make sure the referees have the coach from each team sign the appropriate line. Lastly, the first referee will sign the score sheet after checking it over and then she will thank you for a job well done. Sanctions only occur once in a great while. When they do happen, they are recorded in the sanctions box. Here is a quick look at the most frequent sanctions. Try to record sanctions quickly to avoid delaying the match. When the referee informs you of an improper request, simply put an X in the appropriate circle. In this case, Team B was issued an improper request. If the referee tells you a team has earned a delay warning, place a D in the warning column, indicate which team was at fault, the set, and the score, with the score of the team that earned the warning listed first. Other sanctions are shown here, but we will not go over those circumstances. Should they occur, the referee will help you. There is a separate module on VolleyballRefTraining.com on how to properly record sanctions. Here is an example of what a completed score sheet will look like. Remember, the referee will assist you in filling out any sections not covered in this clinic. A separate module covers the use of the deciding game score sheet. Lastly, here are a few reminders. Be sure to write in three X's for the start of each set. Serving team, receiving team, and the first box under position one of the receiving team. Be alert to the Libro situation for each team. 
If there is an issue, notify the second referee right away. If a team uses two Libros, those are the only Libros for the entire match. If a team uses zero or one Libro, the team may change every set. And check your score sheet for accuracy and completeness at the end of each set and at the end of the match.